Hey everybody, uh, I'm Charlie. This is the Dev Environment. Uh, today we're gonna do a coding test. Um, this is actually a coding test that I did f uh, for a job interview one time, um, and I really, I really thought it was a cool coding challenge. So basically, it's to draw a clock onto the screen, have an hour, minute, and second hand, and have them move in real time. Um, so it's a great example of code and uh, styling functionality. So yeah, I thought we could dive right into it. Um, I'm actually gonna use a library um, called Styled Components. So Styled Components, oops, I spelled it wrong, Styled Components. Um, and so it's a library that is CSS and JS. So it kind of gets the best of both worlds, but um, you can actually use backticks and you can write traditional CSS. So let's do that. Um, I'm also going to install the types for it because we are using TypeScript. So types slash styled components. Um, two things here. Uh, types, always save them as dev dependencies. <laughs> I see a lot of people save them as dependencies. So types matter um, at build time, but they don't matter at runtime. So um, you don't need to save them as, as normal dependencies, just save them as dev dependencies. Um, and then we're just gonna npm run dev and start our app. Um, so here we have uh, an app TSX file, we have our styles file, and we have our use time file. So in the styles file, I'm just gonna import styled, oops, from styled components. And I'm gonna make uh, a component uh, just called wrapper, and it's gonna be a styled.div. And so here, I'm just going to do kind of what we did last time where we have a uh, 100 view height and a width of 100 view width. Um, I'm also going to put a display of flex um, and I'm going to just center everything because this is going to be where our clock goes. So uh, justify content and align item center and we'll save that. And then we go back into our, our app TSX and this is really cool. And this is what I like about style components is that the wrapper is going to be the name of the component. And so you could import each individual thing one by one, but if you go import uh, start as s from and then our styles file, um, now we can use this s namespace as all of our components. So I can just go s dot wrapper. And now it also differentiates uh, what components are a style component and what components could be a component in a component library or something else. So that S prefix, that tells us that these are styled components here. Um, and then we're also gonna make a clock. So I'm gonna export const and I'm gonna call it clock. Um, and I'm once again gonna make this a styled div. Um, I'm gonna give it a height of 400 and a width of 400 pixels. Um, and I'm gonna give it a border of two pixels um, and we can make it uh, salmon. And then so I'm gonna come back here and go S dot clock and see, look at that. Like they're already ready to go. And now we're on the screen, which is really awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, this is a square clock. So we're gonna make it have a border radius of 50% just to kind of give it that nice curve that we like in our clocks. <laughs> Um, and then from there, we need some hands for our clock. So I'm going to go export const and I'm just going to do the hour hand for right now. Um, and then I'm going to make that also a styled div. And so this is where it gets really interesting. And this is where the, like the, this is just part one of the logic is just getting the UI logic. And so actually what I do here is like, we need to have basically the base of the the hand right in dead center and then kind of have a hand extending from it. And so there is a lot of ways that you could align a div kind of with the bottom right at the center. But I find like the easiest thing to do actually in this case is if we just give it like a height of let's say five pixels um, and a width of five pixels, you could even just do it as one pixel, right? Like we could just make it one by one. Um, I'm just gonna give it a background just so I can like see what, what I'm doing here. Um, and then I'm going to give it a position of absolute and I'm gonna make top 50%, left 
uh, 50%. And then I'm going to transform and translate. Um, and I'm going to do the minus 50%, minus 50%, which will put us right kind of in the center. And then I'm going to go s dot hour hand. And then it's kind of hard to see. <laughs> um, there is a little dot there. Uh, if I make it a bit bigger, let's do five and five. You can see like the dot is like smack dab in the center. So then how do you make the hand? Um, it's a good question. So actually the cool thing about style components is it actually uses kind of like uh, SAS. Um, so we can actually do the ampersand and then after, and then we can do uh, pseudo elements. So we can do afters and befores and all that stuff. And that's what I really like about style components. And so let's give it like a height of, uh, let's say 175 pixels and a width of five pixels and content. Uh, we just have to set it to empty content just to make the pseudo element show up. Um, and then I'm going to give it a background color. We can do it the same, the Alice blue there. And let's see. Um, oh, and I also have to do position absolute. And now it's pointing down. Um, so that means I just have to go to bottom of zero and then boom. So now we have our hand here, which is pretty nice. So that's our hour hand. Um, we're going to need a minute hand and a second hand. And so another thing that's really cool about style components is basically if I do a minute hand, like I could, I could pretty much copy this entire thing and then make this a uh, minute hand and just change the color. Uh, we can make this, uh, Oh, what is Gainsborough? Let's see what that is. Uh, and then I'll go S dot minute hand and kind of see it's very similar. <laughs> um, let's make it goldenrod. There we go. Um, and so our minute hand kind of overlaps our uh, hour hand, right? So also the minute hand is usually a bit shorter. So I'll make it 50 and then I'll drop it to three. So now our minute hand and our hour hand um, kind of live uh, more or less in the same space. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and we can do one last one uh, of like a second hand. Um, so a second hand. And uh, let's do the same thing. So actually, like just the thing to know here is, uh, so we have the bottom zero. Um, and you can see that the it's kind of hard to see, but you can see here that the uh, minute hand is kind of a little bit off center. Um, so we can go left 50% and oops, and scroll down here and go left of 50%. And, and it looks like that's going to get us half of the way there, but we have to translate our X. Um, so trans, oh, sorry, I want to do a transform. Um, and translate our x by minus 50%. And then that'll center us properly. Um, and then here we do the same thing, transform or translate our x by minus 50%. Cool. Um, so then once again, I'm going to make this one 25. I'm just going to make it one pixel. Um, and I'm going to make it purple. And then we'll go here and we'll pop it in. So S dot second hand. And there we go. So we have our three kind of hands there. It's a little hard to see right now, um, but it'll be a lot easier when we see it rotate. And so how are we going to rotate it? Um, that's a really interesting question. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is like we don't actually need these so much anymore. Um, they can just be invisible to our eye here. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to have them rotate in degrees. And so this is going to, this is the fun part about programming is we get a little math challenge here. Um, but just to demonstrate, I'm going to do a transform and I'm going to do a rotate. 
And I'm going to rotate it 20, uh, let's do 45 degrees. And you can see that the hand now rotates like a clock. Um, and so we need to create some math that's going to give us uh, the time in degrees. Um, and so that's where we're going to write kind of a custom hook here. And this custom hook is going to give us the opportunity to do that. So I'm going to um, export uh, default function, and I'm going to call it use time. And so this use time uh, hook uh, is going to be imported here. So I'm going to import use time from dot slash use time. And then so um, what I'm going to want from this is I'm going to want this hook to return us the hour, minute, and second in degrees. <laughs> and so I know it sounds a lot, but let's just kind of go through it. So first of all, we're going to need um, our state. So um, I'm going to go hours and set hours. And it's going to be a use state object. And we want it to be a number. So I'm just going to, by default, set it to 0. Um, and then we'll do a minutes and set minutes. And we're going to do a use state there, also of 0. And then we're going to do const, and we're going to go seconds and set seconds. And that's also going to be another use state of 0. And so how are we going to get the time? Well, JavaScript has a date object. So we'll go const date equals new date. And that's going to give us, um, that's going to give us the current date and the current timestamp. But we're going to need this to happen. It's going to need to update at minimum once a second, right? Because the second hand is going to tick at one second. And so in JavaScript, uh, we can use intervals. So I'm going to make an interval here, um, set interval. And the set interval is a JavaScript method that runs um, repeatedly until it's told to stop. And you can pass it um, a callback, which is just the a number of time, like how long you want between the intervals. So if we set it to one second, then the set interval will run every second. And it's going to grab us the date object. Now, um, I don't want this to be affected by rendering. And so we're going to use a use effect hook. And so this use effect hook is going to give us uh, one. Nope. It's going to give us one thing specifically. It's going to give us, like, we're going to pass it an empty dependency array. And what that means is it's going to trigger once on the initial render. And then that's it. It's not going to, it's not going to re trigger every render. So that means that our interval is going to start on the very first render, but it's not going to continue to create new intervals uh, when re-renders occur. Now, the thing is about a use effect, and especially when you're doing something like a, a set interval or like a fetch or something that's asynchronous, is if for whatever reason the DOM gets refreshed or you navigate to another page or whatever, you want that methodology to stop. And so um, we do what's called a cleanup. And so we're going to return a function here. And in this function, um, we're going to use the clear interval, and we're going to pass in the interval as the argument. So what that's going to do is that if we ever navigate away from this page, or we refresh the page, or whatever, it's going to run this return um, method. And then it's going to do a clear interval. And so it's going to like clear off all the asynchronous behavior. It's not going to like, you know, it's going to have a nice cleanup. So now that we have the date here, um, we need to grab some of the values from it. Um, and so the date object has uh, get hours. And that's going to get us our hours in 24 hour time. <laughs> Something to know. So and then we have date dot get minutes. And that's going to get us the minutes um, out of 60. And then finally, we have date dot get seconds. And that's going to give us the seconds out of 60 as well. And so what we want to do is every time this interval runs, we want to update these state objects. 
And so we're going to go set hours and then we're going to pass in that set minutes and we're going to pass in this and then we're going to go set seconds and we're going to pass in this. Now, what is this going to give us? This is going to give us the hours, minutes and seconds. Um, however, <laughs> as we know from earlier when we were doing our styling, we need degrees. We need a degree representation of the hours, minutes, and seconds to make this clock work. This is what makes this a good programming challenge. Um, so what I'm going to do here is actually from our hook, now that we have the state setting up, I'm just going to uh, return hours, minutes, and seconds. And then what that's going to do is now we can go back into our app TSX and we can uh, use time, we can trigger the hook, and then we can console.log time and we can see uh, what the time is gonna, gonna be. So if I just clear here, uh, we got an error here, um, but we see that the time is, is running here. We have hour zero, minutes 19, seconds 59, zero, 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 zero. Awesome. Um, so now what we wanna do is we wanna get these into uh, degrees. And so to do that, we need to first get a fraction of the hours. So how many hours are there? Well, we know it's 24 hour time. So uh, we're gonna do date.get hours, and then we're gonna divide that by 24. And then we're just gonna multiply that by 360. And that's gonna give us the value in degrees because we're getting the fraction, the, the value of the current hour by the total hours. And then we're multiplying it by 360, and that's going to give us the proper value that what we need. So uh, we're going to do the same with minutes, but of course we're going to do it by 60, multiply it by 360, and then once again we're going to do it with seconds, and then we're going to multiply it by 360 here. And so what this is going to start giving us now is rather than our our problem before we're getting the degrees. However, if you, it's kind of hard to see, I'm sorry, uh, zoom in, oh, can I zoom in on the console? There we go. So we see here though that we're getting this like long decimal because sometimes our, um, our second divisions are, are not gonna be clean. And so all we wanna do then is we're just gonna go a math.floor and that's gonna round it to the nearest lower integer. So math.floor. And once again here, math.floor. You can do math.round as well. Um, but now what it does is it cleans up. So now we have zero minutes, 26, and we see that the seconds is changing its degrees each time. So now in our app.tsx, we can stop console logging out the time. Um, but the question is, is now how do we pass this into uh, the styling to change the rotation. And so that's what I really like styled components for, is because styled components um, take in props. And so what we can do is we can make a new prop called rotation. And then what I can pass in is time dot hours for the hour hand. I can pass in rotation and go time dot minutes for the minute hand. And then I can pass in rotation and I can pass in time dot seconds for the second hand. And so the really cool part is that now with style components, you can inject uh, the prop data into the CSS styling. And so I'll show you how to do that. So, so we have the, the rotation prop passing in. And so how do we get it in our component? Well, so we know here we have this rotation. And so at any point, because this is, is using backticks, this is like a like a string here. So um, what we can do is just kind of do what we do normally and, and do the dollar sign and open and close the uh, brackets there. And then it'll take a P, it's an arrow function, and then P.rotation. Now TypeScript's gonna yell at me here because it's saying, how do I know that P has rotation? And so what you can do is between the backtick and the HTML element that you want to use, um, we can pass in um, a typing. So I'm going to make rotation and it's going to be a number. And then now TypeScript will stop yelling at me. And so now I've passed in 
uh, the rotation and the degrees. And so I can actually just grab this and we can pass it into minute hand and we can pass it into the second hand. And then I just need to, once again, copy in our type into here and into here. And then now we have it and our clock is ticking. It's kind of hard to see the purple. So let's maybe make it uh, uh, red is good. We'll make it red and you can see our clock is ticking and we have the time and it's looking beautiful. So um, yeah, I mean, there's obviously when I did this coding interview and I kind of got it done, then, you know, <laughs> the interviewer uh, just went to town on me. It was like, okay, now do all the numbers on the on the face. And and so that that was, uh, we didn't have time to finish it. And like, I was just like, wow, that's a, that's a great uh, bar raiser there. Cause it's like, you have to do the 12 and then the one and the two and, the, and they rotate around the circumference of the clock, but then the thing that's kind of interesting is that like, you know, as they go, they also kind of have like, you're rotating, but then you also have to like tilt it back to make them all like level and stuff like that. Crazy. Um, I don't think that would normally be a question you'd, you know, you'd have to do uh, in a standard coding interview. Um, but hey, you know, if you want to go to town, go to town. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go that far today, but uh, you know, if there is a lot of demand for it, post it down in the comments and, you know, we can, we can e extrapolate on this further. But so anyways, so let's go over the code one more time and, and we'll just kind of talk about everything we did here. So we use styled components. So imported all the style components as S from styles. So this is a really nice tip. I read this somewhere in an article a few years ago and I really liked it because, you know, we kind of have all of these exported const and stuff like that. And then just being able to prefix them in the DOM. Um, if you use like a, a component library or something, it's really nice to know when you're importing like a custom React component, right? Like if you imported, like let's say you had a page container or something, you'd have like page container um, from whatever, like dot slash page container or something. And then so the cool part is that when you use the page container component, um, then you can kind of tell the difference between uh, what is a styled component and what is like a custom React component, right? Because um, the the custom React components won't have the S prefix and then everything with the S will. So I really like that. Um, so I'll get rid of that because we don't have that component. Um, so then let's start off with our hook here. So we use three state objects just for hours, minutes, and seconds. Um, we prefix them just with like a um, like a like a zero value just to show that they're a number, and so you know that's you know you don't have to do that. You can set it to null. You could do like some sort of validation, like should I show a loading state or not? But I thought that was really nice. Just like just a simple way to do it, especially in a coding interview. Really easy way to do it. Um, then we have our use effect. That's very important in this case, just to make sure that we don't like constantly be redrawing the, the set interval. Um, without it, um, it means that the, I don't even know, let's try. I like breaking things, so it's fun. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this because that's gonna break everything. But yeah, okay, so immediately like we start having some issues and I mean, it'll kind of work, but if you ever put like buttons or anything else that's gonna like redraw the DOM, um, that's gonna like re-render the app component or the component that this hook is in, you're gonna, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> so it's good to wrap it in the use effect just to make sure that it only happens on initial render. Um, and then, <clears throat> um, so then we have the set interval. Um, also remember to do the cleanup function. Um, that's important, yeah, like as I was saying earlier, for any asynchronous activity. So if you were to make fetch or anything like that and, you know, someone like refresh the DOM or they re-render the component or something, um, having that clear interval is going to stop that asynchronous action from continuing beyond the life cycle of the component. It's like really important. Um, I don't know if there's any good docs on that. If anyone has a good doc, like also post that in the comments too. Let's like share as much information as we can. Um, 
just because, yeah, that's like super helpful stuff. Um, but just know that, you know, anytime you use something like a use effect or something with an asynchronous thing, just return an arrow function and then, you know, just whatever asynchronous activities, if you do like a set timeout or, uh, you know, yeah, like you want to do for a fetch, do like an abort controller or something like that. Just make sure you kind of add those in. Um, and then, yeah, so we have our interval, we're running our set interval. Um, we have the date. We're just grabbing a new date object, making sure that that's inside the set interval because otherwise you're going to have the one date. Like if we move it outside and then refresh, uh, it's just going to be frozen because we've only fetched the date the one time. Uh, we have to refetch the date with each interval to make this work. So that's really important. Um, and then doing the state updates. Uh, this math here, uh, date that get hours divided by 24 times 360. Yeah, like I mean, knowing that you need the degrees instead of the uh, just like the date value, right? Because like if we didn't have the degrees, um, then it kind of gives you, I mean, the hour is not good because right now it's midnight where I am, so it's at zero anyways. But you know, like you, you can see that the um, like the second hand now is kind of broken without it, right? Um, and so we have to we have to make sure that we keep that three sixty degrees there. Um, and yeah, and then we start ticking again. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much that. Um, you know, knowing the logic of things like yeah, like the set interval, we can do it every one second and that's probably like the most efficient way you could do this without question every millisecond there's nothing stopping you from doing it you could even do it every like half second if you wanted to um but you know what i mean like minimizing the amount of re-renders and optimizing as best as we can in a in a silly case like this like where we're drawing a clock um you know keeping it to the to the bare minimum which is a thousand uh, milliseconds here um, and then in our styled components here, um, so the wrapper is pretty standard and so is the clock. Uh, what I did notice here is that the, the hour, minute, and second hand, there's a lot of reused styling in code. And so something that's really cool about styled components that I really like is that you can actually uh, just do... Um, Okay, so let's go like so for example, like we'll just we'll just call it like hand. And then I literally open some back ticks and I can copy so like the height width position top and left, like those are the same for almost all of them. The only thing that's different before the pseudo element, the after pseudo element, is the degrees, right? So I can literally grab all of these and just paste them in here. Um and then this is just like a constant with a string, right? So as we see here, we also have back ticks, right? So this is just like a string. So I can put hand in here, and then I can literally copy and paste all that into all of these. And then now I can use that common styling of just like the hand template for all of our all of our things. And so if I save and refresh, um, yeah, just like exactly how it was before, right? And the same with the after as well. So like I could make like a const after and, and you can name these whatever, like you call it like after template or whatever else. So like the contents the same, the height and the width change and the background color does too. Um, but the position absolute and the bottom, this one should have these as well. Um, so like, let's say, okay, so I can pull content down, height, width, change, background color, position absolute. So everything here, here, um, yeah, everything here, I can just pull it out and put it into this after um, template string as well. And then so now, uh, just like we did before, I could just go after. And then now we have the basic styling of all of our afters as well. So um, let's just get rid of this and get rid of all of these and put after as well there and then get rid of this and get rid of all these and after is there as well. And then so now we've basically cleaned up a lot of our code. You could put you can break these out. They don't have to be in the style styles file or whatever. Um, but you can do that there. 
Um, and it's just like a nice way that you could just kind of like clean up a lot of the reused code, right? Because then like our height is different for each one. Our transform tra rotations obviously different for each one. And our background colors are different. So like now it's like we kind of have the, um, you know, like the unique code and then the reused code kind of broken off into a template string. So that's really nice about style components. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this one. Um, yeah, like I really hope, kind of wanted to do like a live coding session. There was some interest on Reddit, uh, which I thought was really cool. So I will try to set that up as well. I'm sorry, I've, it's been a busy week, <laughs> as you can probably tell, because it's 12.34 a.m. for me. Um, so I'm doing this video late, but uh, yeah, it's always great to share this stuff. I absolutely love doing this. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you learned some cool things from this. Um, but... Uh, I will see you next time. Thanks so much.